Um, did, can you all hear that? Did you all hear that? Yes, okay. Right, so um, I, shall, I shall move along. <laughs> That's all right. What, it just comes up with a little tick or something, does it? Yeah, okay. All right, so this week um, we are looking at um, side body, so postures to um, open up to release, to uh, stretch, to time the side body. Um, it's really just one of the movements that comes into the six movements of the spine anyway. So it's, it, we're always moving in this kind of lateral way in our yoga classes, um, just you know, because it's one of those, well, actually two of the six movements. So it's, it's side to the left, side to the right. Um, I, for me personally, I find that these movements help my back a lot, my low low back you know and you get that bit tightness we stuck at the desk a lot uh, very helpful for that but just creates a, a sense of ease and sense of release um so we're going to start laying down we're going to work with a lateral uh, a lateral kind of breath so same as we did wednesday um so just coming coming down to laying and you uh, just be comfortable and you might find it helpful to take or to place your hands over your ribs. So your fingers are pointing towards each other and then you can just rest your elbows uh, to the mat either side. So should, just so you're not holding your arms in any particular way. So just come to your natural breath, first of all, um, just breathing as you naturally comfortably would. Let your body settle, so really allow yourself to, to relax. And then when you feel ready, we're just, we're just going to focus on that midsection breath. So when we're doing a three-part breath, this is the uh, breathing into the midsection, into the ribs, uh, middle, of the, middle of the lungs. So you're breathing in, you're expanding, directing the breath into the ribs. So you can feel that um, sideways movement into the hands, with the ribs expanding out. And then with the exhalation, we're just softening and releasing. It might feel like a small movement. It might feel like a quite a big, expansive movement. You just go with what you're feeling, just trying to direct the breath into that midsection. Each time you breathe out, you're just relaxing a little bit more, releasing a little bit more. Focus the mind on the breath, the breathing in, expanding. Breathing out, softening and releasing. So the arms are relaxed, you're not kind of holding, they're just resting onto the ribs just to kind of help uh, you direct the breath. And we'll just do this a few more times. We just really feel that we're creating space helping you to breathe more easily so just encouraging a fuller breath using this mid part of the lungs a little bit more expanding with the in breath and softening with the out breath we'll just do this a couple more times really let yourself be heavy as you breathe out so really using this kind of initial uh, breath focus to to kind of ground yourself center yourself And then after the next exhalation, just releasing the shaping of the breath. Just come back to your normal way of breathing. You can uh, keep the hands away or just let them come to the sides. Just take a nice couple of full deep breaths in. And then just going to bring your knees in towards the chest. So just hugging the knees in and give the uh, little rock side to side if that feels good, feels helpful for the spine. And then we'll just cross at the ankles when you're ready and just bring yourselves up to sitting. You can come by your side, obviously, if that feels better. Okay, good. <laughs> We're going to come into a forward fold. So you're going to have your um, left leg in front. Um, I think this is comfy for everyone-ish. 
Yes, any knee issues, obviously find a position that is comfortable. We're just going to fold forward. So you're just going to take your hands um, in front of you, wherever it might just be um, that you're sitting here. It might be that you go a little deeper. So go as deep as you comfortably can. You're kind of grounded through the sit bones. Um, I think they can see, they might find they come off a little bit if you're folding all the way forward. But just uh, think about pressing back into the sit bones. Um, yeah, if you need to extend the leg, that's fine. Okay. Um, just kind of let the knees, let the hips relax. Uh, quite possibly feeling a bit of a stretch into the, um, the hip of the leg that's in front. So that will be your left, I think, for, for most. Yes. Just take a couple of breaths. And then you're going to walk yourselves around um, to your right side. So you're walking the hands across. You'll look pretty comfy. If there's any issues folding forwards, you can always come into a seated side bend. Okay, so just kind of find how that, uh, see how that fits in your body. So you're walking the hands around. You might have one hand on top of the other if you're moving quite far around, or you just keep them one uh, next to the other. Just let the head get heavy. Stretching the spine here as well as opening up the side body. You can really feel, so this is really the, the, the feeling that we're kind of going for throughout the class, that, that stretch in this moment, you can probably feel that from the hip all the way up to the tip of the little finger on one side. And we're opening up the ribs, we're releasing any kind of holding around here. You might find that when you're breathing, you're breathing into that open space. You're opening up one side of the lungs a little bit more and maybe a pretty nice stretch deep into the hips, into the glutes. So kind of purposely breathe into that open side. You can see why this is good for the spine as well, all that kind of holding around the side body. And then we're going to slowly come back to centre, slowly, slowly back to centre. Just take a moment so you kind of adjust, uh, come back to neutral. And then when you feel to, we're going to come back up to sitting up and then we'll change over to the other side. So this way you feel it more into the other hip as well. So you're going to take the right leg in front and then doing exactly the same. So just walking the hands forward. Again, you're just stopping wherever's comfortable, so it might be up, it might go a little uh, deeper into it, wherever's available, obviously it can be quite strong on the knees here, so you want to find uh, what works for you. Just take a couple of breaths in the centre. And then you're just going to walk your hands round to the other side. So it will be the left, I think, for most. We're all doing the same. Yes. So over to the other side. Again, might feel the same, might feel tighter, might feel easier. You're just walking your hands round as far as they comfortably can go while thinking about ground. I know that your hips, are, uh, your sit bones are probably off slightly, but um, thinking about still grounding down through your seat. Letting the head, the upper body get heavy, so you're uh, getting some weight into it, breathing into the side waist, side ribs. Just going to take a couple more breaths. And really feel like you're breathing into that open space. So we're just kind of working to stretch a little bit more here, open up. And then come back to centre, nice and slow. Just pausing for a moment, just so your kind of spine comes back to neutral. Otherwise, you're kind of, you're kind of bent one side. And then we're just going to walk ourselves up to sitting up. Okay, good. So we're going to take a wide-legged uh, position, Upavistakonasana. Um, 
flesh from the sit bones, if that's helpful, or sitting on a thin block or blanket if you feel kind of slumpy. But actually, we're going to come into a side bend anyway, so it's not, uh, you'll find it's a little bit easier to sit um, upright. But don't overstretch, obviously, don't sort of, there's any pinching in the knees and bring the legs in a little bit. Uh, we could just have that hand on the leg, uh, right? Yes, okay. <laughs> and then breathing that other arm up. Or actually, it might be easier to have it behind. See what feels better. Um, and just coming into a side bend. So if you feel like you're folding forwards, it might be easier to have the hand behind, actually, to keep you upright. So that you're not folding forward. So it's not into the back. It's all into the side body. Okay, again, gaze might be up, gaze might be forwards. Breathing. Pressing down through the sit bones now. So both sit bones stay grounded here. Feels a bit strange. <laughs> it feels a bit weird. Oh, it feels weird. Just taking a couple more breaths and stretching it slightly differently, coming back to centre. Obviously, not every single movement is going to be a side bend. <laughs> we still have to go through the six movements of the spine. Um, so over to the other side. So just hand wherever was helpful, really, to rest. Breathe the other arm up and then over. But if you really think about pressing down through the opposite sit bone, so it's my left, your right, then you're not kind of just fold, like leaning over. You're really grounding down and then reaching over. And that stretch comes all the way up and breathing, remembering to breathe, not holding the breath. You can see how it restricts the breath, isn't it? It kind of, it really restricts on the side that you're bending into, but really opens up on the other side. So it's quite, it does ultimately helps you to breathe more easily. Okay, and then coming back to center. Okay, good. So we're gonna come, well, you might want to help your legs in. <laughs> We're going to come on to all fours, do a few cat cows, um, just to kind of get neutral of the spine, so your forward fold, uh, back bend of the spine, obviously. So as you breathe in, gaze is coming forward. As you breathe out, then you're tucking under, so chin towards the chest, open up across the shoulders, belly button towards the spine. And we'll just do this a few times. So you just... Uh, Go in a way that feels comfortable for you, for your spine, so you're not overstretching. Okay. So breathing in, gaze forward, breathing out, tucking under. We'll just do this one more time and then we'll lift up into downward facing dog. So you're breathing in, gaze forward, breathing out, open the back body. And then just back to neutral, and then we're going to tuck the toes. I'm going to lift up into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So lifting up through the bottom and the hips. Okay, good. Just take a moment. And then we're going to take the right leg. So the right, well, you can swing it out behind first, or you can just step it forward. We're going to come into Anyanayasana. So maybe three legged dog's helpful. Swing the foot through, and then take the knee, uh, yes, the knee down. Toes, back toes can be tucked or untucked, however is comfortable for your knee. Uh, you can always pad the knee if it need be. <laughs> so so um, you can either keep the hands to the ground, you can take the hands to the, um, my head's cut off now, but I'll move that in a minute. Head to the knee or, not head to the knee, what am I talking about? Hands to the knee or arms overhead. Okay, so your choice uh, within the pose. Um, all these part names will seem to intermingle if I don't focus on what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, good. So we're um, obviously sinking through the hips. So you're just going to go to where it feels comfortable. Breathing. You don't have to go too low. You can shift the hips back if it feels too, like, like you're overstretching. Okay, and then we're going to bring the hands down through prayer, if they're overhead, you're going to um, take the, so have we got our right, yes, if, so if your right foot's forward, the left hand will come to the floor, to the inside, and then you're going to turn towards the front leg, that worked out, yes, and then you're just going to open up. Uh, a little bit of a twist, a little bit of an opening along the side. It's not a side bend, but you're opening up through the side body or thinking about the side of the body. So not everything's a side body bend. Sometimes it's just uh, thinking about releasing. Okay, just taking one more breath here. 
and then coming back to centre. We'll tuck the toes, we'll press back to downward facing dog. Can come to child's pose if you want to, if you need to. Take a moment, just kind of lifting up through the bottom of the hips. And then setting up on the other side, so you're going to take the left leg or whichever one you didn't do, if you did the other side, out behind, swing through, setting up for Anyanyasana, so your low lunge, crescent lunge, uh, toes or back toes, tuck, untuck whichever's comfortable, and then however you um, feel comfortable with arm placement, so you can keep them here, knees or overhead. If you're overhead, it becomes a little bit more of a back bend, or you can make it a little bit more of a back bend, just by kind of lifting up a little out of the waist and opening back. We're just going to take a couple of breaths here. We're obviously opening the hips with a bit of strength, obviously, with the hands if you're overhead or her at the heart center. Kind of feel a little bit like a balance as well, a lot going on in the pose. And then we'll bring the hands down. Uh, so right hand, if your left foot's forward, I think it is for everyone, right hand to the floor and then just opening. So trying to open back a little. So you're not just reaching up, but kind of taking it back to really open up the side waist okay again um you feel it kind of on the left side of the chest that kind of expansiveness and just look yeah good breathing <laughs> always breathing and then coming back to center oh, that's quite a strong stretch isn't it <laughs> through the hips um we're going to press back to downward facing dog one of those ones that's really lovely. Some of these kind of stretches, like, like lizard as well, this beautiful, beautiful hip flexor stretches. You feel like you stay there forever, but it's very difficult to get out if you stay, if you stay there too long. So just, um, you can pedal through the feet here, opening up the calves, particularly if they feel tight, mine feels super tight. So it's just a nice way to kind of ease shoulders away from the ears, so they're not bunched up kind of like lengthening the neck a little. And then we're gonna bring the feet to the hands. So stepping, jumping, your choice. Just coming into Uttanasana, so your forward fold. Just let yourself hang, just for a couple of breaths. Bring the weight slightly forward, so into the uh, balls of the feet. Heels are still down, but just shifting the weight forwards. And just let yourself hang. You can take hold of the inside of the elbows if you wish. Let the jaw, the cheeks relax in particular. Nod the head, shake the head. Just really kind of get yourself to loosen into it. Feel that release through the upper back, the nice kind of that inversion across the upper back, the spine. And then we're just going to take the hands to the hips and then just roll ourselves up or flat back if you prefer, just whichever feels better for your spine when you come up to standing. Okay, good. So I'm going to move this back without unplugging it. That's it. So I think um, we're gonna do Surya Namaskar. What did we do last week? B, didn't we? Did we do B last week? I think actually then, then let's do A. Um, I was undecided. Okay, so there's that much of a decision, is it? It's one or the other. Uh, okay, so Surya Namaskar A, we will do. Uh, so we'll stand to the top of that. There's no sideways movements in our Surya Namaskar. That's why it always brings us forward and back. So it's great for forward folds, back bends, but that's why we need to bring in the twists and the uh, side bends for the rest of the practice. So breathing in, arms up. Exhale, folding forward, so hinging from the hips, hands to rest wherever you can reach, breathing in, half lift. Exhale, releasing, stepping back with the right foot, so that lovely long lunge into those hip flexors again, coming back to plank. Remember your modified knees down option, just depends on energy levels on any given morning. Keep those elbows hugging in tight towards the body, just so they're not poking out, putting pressure on them. And then lowering down, maybe you take your knees down first, or just lower Chaturanga Dandasana when you lower down the whole body, opening into your cobra or upward facing dog, depending on your spine. Shoulders down, shoulders back, 
And that stretch, that opening across the chest is a back bend, breathing, pressing into the tops of the toes, maybe lifting through the thighs so the knees might come off. And always, this position always feeling good in your back, not overstretching. Tucking the toes, pressing back, uh, downward facing dog. Back into Adam with this Vanasana. Lots of little kind of adjustments, changes within the pose to suit your body. You can have, if, it's, if your heels are down, really easy down, then it's a little bit more of a challenge to have the feet together. Uh, if, they're, if it feels more comfortable too, you can have the, the feet as wide as mat width. So my heels are obviously much easier down, more comfortably down if my feet are mat width. If I bring my feet closer together, obviously you feel it a, little, a deeper stretch in the back of the leg. So you just adjust it to how it feels good in your body. Lifting up through the bottom of the hips, that deepens the stretch in the back of the legs. Breathe. Take another deep breath. And then we'll take the right leg out behind. So your three-legged dog through, swing that leg through between the hands. That's it. Good. Both feet together, Uttanasana, top of the mat, breathing in, half lift, so lifting the heart, the gaze, and the bottom and the hips as well. Exhale, releasing, and then breathing the arms up, opening back, possibly. Exhale, hands to the heart center. You should be feeling warmer already, even just a little bit. So come into the other side, exactly the same, breathing the arms up. Exhale, fold, so hinging from the hips, that's it. Breathing in, half lift. Exhale, releasing, left foot steps back, long lunge. Coming back to plank, the knees off, knees down, whichever feels better, nice straight line. So try not to sag through the hips, not that I can see that any of you are, but just see, finding that middle position where you're a nice straight line. Keep those elbows hugging in, lowering down. So maybe you can take your knees down first if you wish all the way down to the mat into your cobra breathing shoulders down elbows in you just feel that lovely release across the low back and then uh tucking the toes pressing back down and facing dog you always come back to child's pose or keep the knees down so if you're feeling not you know not feeling that energetic or you need a breather you always come back to child's pose at any point Okay, and then just pressing the chest back towards the thighs, lifting up through the bottom of the hips. Always that feeling almost as if someone is just drawing you up uh, through your kind of centre. You're pressing those heels towards the floor. Doesn't matter if they never touch. It's just that kind of focus on stretching um, through the back of the legs, back of the back of the legs, calves, uh, hamstrings. Taking the Left leg, it is the left leg, isn't it? Left leg out behind, through between the hands. Okay, good. Both feet together. <laughs> Uttanasana, forward fold, that's it. Good, breathing in, half lift. Exhale, releasing, and then breathing the arms up. Uh, exhale, hands to the heart center. Okay, we're all good. Maybe you can have a drink at any point. If you, if you need a drink, if it's quite stuffy in my room, so uh, you might need a little window open if it's stuffy in yours. <laughs> exactly the same, um, one more round. Breathing in, arms up, exhale, fold. Protecting the back at all times, so you can always take a slight bend through the knees and all the movements. Breathing in, half lift. Exhale, releasing. Right foot steps back to your long lunge. Okay, coming back to plank or modified. Okay, just always bearing in mind your energy levels. Just because it's the morning doesn't necessarily mean you've got more energy. I tend to wake up as the day goes on, as opposed to being really energetic in the first thing. Taking those knees down, oh, uh, option, sorry, and then lowering down into your um, cobra or upward facing dog. Just taking a moment. Okay, good, real good. Um, and then we're going to press back to downward facing dog on the right side, aren't we? Yes, the first side. Uh, just lifting up through the bottom of the hips. And again, if it feels too much, if it's too strong, just take the knees down or come to child's pose. 
breathing. Checking in with your body, nice wide spread of the fingers. Uh, middle fingers pointing directly forward. That kind of prevents that twist of the wrists. Um, pressing down through the face of the fingers rather than all that weight into the heel of the hand. So kind of shift that weight slightly further forwards. And then taking the right leg out behind. It is the right leg, isn't it? Yes, sorry, I'm losing track. We come through between the hands. That's it, at least you know what you're doing. Both feet together to the top of the mat. Breathing in, half lift. Exhale, release, and then breathing arms up. Exhale, hands to prayer at the heart center. And then just one last time to the left side. So breathing in, opening up, folding forward with the out breath. That's it, good. Breathing in, half lift. Exhale, releasing. Left foot steps back to so your long lunge, coming back to plank. Always remembering your options. Wrists are directly under the shoulders. They kind of set. It's just really so you're not like this, that horrible pressure on your wrists. So you've got that support if you're kind of stacked here. Lowering down. So you can take your knees down first or just lower fully down through Chaturanga. Uh, shoulders down and back, elbows in. Checking in with your back, you should just feel like a really nice release. Again, if it's too much, you just lower down. Okay, tucking the toes, pressing back, downward facing dog. Last downward facing dog, I think, of the session. So just taking a few deep breaths, all that lifting up, playing with the positioning of the feet, really pressing down through those heels. Chest back towards the thighs. So you're thinking of this kind of upside down. Actually, it's not necessarily upside down. Not upside down V. It's a bit upside down triangle, but it's not, is it? Triangle for me anyway. <laughs> Breathing. And then taking the left foot out behind. Through between the hands. Almost there. Definitely feeling warmer. Both feet together to the top of the mat. Breathing in, half lift. Exhale, releasing, and then breathing the arms up. And then hands to prayer at the heart center. Okay, good, I'll adjust my screen. So my head is off. Very light in here today, isn't it? Those sort of extremes in my living room. It's not that bright outside, but it's like, I can see on the screen, it looks really light. Okay, I need the water. So if you have a block or something you can use as a block, uh, one of my Wednesday ladies used a toilet roll. <laughs> it's effective, they're a packet of toilet rolls, but it's, it's spongy, isn't it? So it actually was quite, I thought, she must have just randomly had it to have. <laughs> but it did the trick, it did the trick. So it doesn't have to be a block if you don't have one. Uh, but if you do, obviously you can make use of it. Uh, anything that you can just kind of rest um, your hands. I think my, most of you have something you can use. Cushions, otherwise, that cushions. Okay. If you, um, well, we, we've all got something we can use. If not, it doesn't matter. You can just rest. Um, I'm just trying to see. Okay. Okay, so we'll come um, to Kanasana. So we're going to start with Trukhanasana. Um well, actually, you might want your block for chicken last night. If you think you're going to use your block for this one, then you're just going to take it to the inside of the leading foot. So your um, my left, your right. Okay. You don't have to have it for chicken last night. It's just uh, can be quite nice for for alignment, really. So your right foot is out. Back foot is possibly in, knees permitting. If that twist feels uncomfortable on the knee, then you just keep a kind of right angled position. Your arms to shoulder height. Good. <laughs> Throwing the hip a little and then reaching, reaching, reaching. And then the hand comes down um, to where you can reach. So this is where, if you want to use the block, you can rest the hand 
onto the block. It's just if it's helpful. You can obviously always just rest onto the leg or you might be deeper and even reaching the floor. But if you're gonna go deeper, just check in with this shoulder that it's up and not, see I can touch the floor if I do this. <laughs> but uh, it's all in my back then, it's not in my side. So you want to feel it all across here and in your core. Maybe I need some blocks for this. Um, arm can be up, uh, shoulder issues, you can just keep, or it just feels better, you can just have the hand to the hip, okay? Gaze might be up, not to strain the neck though, so if you feel like you're like this, that doesn't feel good. So you want to come from that upper body, twist up, or the arm can come alongside the, um, upper arm can come alongside the ear. And all that does is you can just feel that extra stretch along the side body, breathing. See so yeah, how many postures actually we do regularly that work the side body. Breathing, breathing, breathing. Unscrunch the toes if they're scrunched. Just let them be relaxed. Okay, and then we're going to come up. So we're going to use our core strength to come up. So not the back. So it's all coming from here. And then we're moving the block. So Ardha Chandrasana, you probably could have guessed anyway. We're going to bring the block uh, ahead of the foot, uh, well, about a foot or your foot length uh, in front. You can adjust that. And then we're moving into Ardha Chandrasana. I'll come back a little bit, actually. So you're finding your hand to the block uh, and then your comfortable positions. So your leg might be lower down. You can bring it to uh, parallel to the floor. You might have a hand to the hip. You might have the arm up. Gaze might stay down. Uh, gaze might be forward or it might be up. Okay, Ardha Chandrasana, yes. Half moon pose. That's it, good. So let me just have it. Look, it all looks good from what I can see anyway. Breathing. So your hand is facing away from you. So you're nice and open across the chest. Remember, it shouldn't feel it into the back. So there shouldn't be any discomfort in the back. We want to work to open that hip up. And then again, you are using strength, obviously, with this one through the legs. You can, you can feel that in the back and the core. Uh, if you can find the foot, you can bring it into Ardha Chandra Chapasana, which is sugar cane pose. It's just a layering on, so it's not compulsory. You might even prefer it. <laughs> just not all that way into the block, just in case it goes. Okay, so it's kind of there as a gentle support. Uh, been there for ages, so we're just gonna take one more breath and then release that foot. So we're turning through your half moon pose and then we'll, we'll come up a moment actually, because that's quite strong, it's quite strong in the back, isn't it? But what we're gonna do, and this should feel good now, because of that work there, is we're gonna turn, we're gonna take the block to uh, possibly to the inside or maybe the outside. You can see what feels better, but we're gonna come into revolved triangle. So this should help to release the back. So you're gonna revolve. So now your uh, back hand is in front and then the hand can come, it can rest onto the leg or it can rest onto the block. It might be, uh, the block is on the inside of the front foot, but if it feels better, you can take it to the outside. Okay, it just depends how you're twisting, how it feels. Okay, so you can play with the positioning of the block or just rest a hand onto the low leg. So you're reaching up as much as you can, that kind of openness across uh, one side of the chest is a twist, obviously, rather than uh, a side bend but you can still feel that you're focusing on one side, opening up um, the space, creating space on one side of the chest. So just take a couple of breaths here. So this is where the block really comes into its own because <laughs> you've got that support. You don't have to reach too low. Okay, and then coming back to center, well, to center, so over the front leg. Let, let's just stay in Paswatanasana a moment because this should feel good. You bring your spine back to neutral. Hands can be to the block if the floor seems a long way away or hands to the floor or to the low leg. Just take a moment. Just so you level up your hips again and that brings your spine back into a more comfortable position. And then we'll take the hands onto the hips and come up nice and slowly to standing okay good hanging on in there yes good good okay so 
it doesn't feel right, does it, without doing it on the other side? You, you, you get used to sort of this sort of balance in your body. Uh, so we're going to come into Trikonasana on the other side. So your triangle pose. Uh, so it's not a super wide stance. It's a kind of comfortable three feet-ish front foot out, back foot in, possibly knees permitting, arms to shoulder height, little throw of the hips. So your hips are still facing forward. So we're not turning like a warrior one, keeping them open, reaching, 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 and then the hand comes down. Uh, maybe the leg, maybe the block. Okay, let me see. Yes. Okay, and then arm position as you wish. So here, here, or here. We can move through them a couple of breaths in one position, a couple of breaths in another. That's it, good. Keep breathing, keep smiling. It makes it easier. Okay, and that hip is opening up, so it's not turning down because that feels well comfortable for a moment and then you feel it in your back. It's definitely, you're feeling more of a stretch when you keep the hip and the shoulder open. I always, trick and ask, it just always seems like sat or triangle pose, like really easy. It's actually quite a strong pose. Um, you really feel the strength as well as the stretch combined. You're thinking, hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up and get, get out of it. Okay, so we're gonna come out of it, we're gonna come up. So use the core to bring you up, just so it's not in the back, because that wouldn't be pleasant. Um, and then we're gonna move into Ardha Chandrasana. So you can move that block if you're using it uh, in front of you. Um, and then finally, kind of setting up, I'm moving back a bit so I can be on the screen, and then just holding. Uh, so it, in, it should be, again, stacked, um, shoulder over the wrist, over the block opening uh shoulder. you can flex the foot if you want to keep the leg active to see what feels better it doesn't have to be parallel but you bring it too parallel uh hand to the hip overhead did i offer that before just wherever it's comfortable really um okay let me just have a look and breathing keep breathing that's it all the kind of opening up kind of you'll find that it just kind of layers on i know when i first did the pose I found it so challenging the very first time. I really remember because I, I felt really embarrassed. <laughs> I just couldn't do it literally at all. And I could not move my head. I just wanted to stay here. But with time and with practice, it definitely gets a little bit more comfortable. If you want to bind it, you can find the foot. Uh, that's the first thing, isn't it? So I'm working out where it is. Um, then your possibility to bind it. Uh, again, it's the hardest part is turning the head um but you just keep it and, and also don't strain the neck okay we're good i'm losing i'm losing you <laughs> okay last breath if you're hanging on just about just about okay and then we're gonna release sorry i know <laughs> but you do i know it's like something you say in balance is a very long time but you improve even if you wobble and you need to come out it, it, it helps with the strength and it helps with the balance to stay a bit longer I know I've been to classes and balance for about two breaths and come out and it's not going to improve. So yes, I know I'm leaving you a bit too long. Uh, we're going to come, um, if you use the block other side, you're going to bring the block to where we're going to come into revolve triangle, sorry, Paravrita Chikanasana. So your back hand comes forward. Yes, that's my left, your right. And then um, either to the inside of the foot, you might, if you're twisting quite deep into it, you might find the outside of the foot block placement is better, uh, just for that sort of support, and then opening towards that back leg. So revolve triangle, again, this is, I feel this is quite a challenging pose, it's quite a strong twist. Foots to the floor here, foots to the floor, the back foot is touching down, <laughs> they're making it harder. I said, back foot is touching to the floor. So both feet are on the floor. <laughs> or just, okay. okay, triangle pose. So yes, take one more breath and then turning over the front leg, get the hips level. So that just kind of brings the spine back into a nice comfortable position. Uh, Pars bottom asana, take a moment. Beautiful hamstring stretch. I'm sure you can all feel that all good let the spine release here so you're just folding forward just a forward bend here and then we're going to bring the hands to the hips and come up to 
standing. Okay, good. And then facing front. And I did add some. Oh, yes, yeah, something did. Okay. Um, we're going to come into Prasarita Bhattanasana and then into a side lunge. So we don't need, no, we don't need the blocks now. So if we come a wide, into a wide stance and the feet are parallel, um, actually, let's take the hands behind the back. So if, if you're okay to bring the hands behind the back, just get into the shoulders a little bit, just um, folding forwards and then uh, opening into the shoulders. You, you don't have to do that. If there's any shoulder issues, just take the hands to the floor is fine or hold the inside of the elbows. Bring that weight into the balls of the feet. Again, heels are still touching, so we're not on tippy toes. It's just kind of bringing the weight forwards. If you feel kind of the back needs a release or it's too, tight, too tight in the hamstrings, just take a bend through the knee slightly. Breathing. And then we're going to release the hands. So we're still going to stay folding. Just let the hands uh, come forwards and you can take hold of the inside of the elbows and just kind of swing, sway a little side to side. So each time you go to one side, you can feel a little bit of a stretch, just a gentle stretch into the side body. Okay. And then we're going to come back to centre, take the hands to the floor. Um, and I'm going to go my left, so it'll be your right. So we're just going to bring the hands over to, to the right foot and bend into that knee. Uh, yes, it's your right side, isn't it? Okay, I know this is, um, this is okay for everyone. I know it's quite strong on the, on the knee. You can always stay up a little, so you've got your hands supported. Uh, you can feel a kind of stretch into the inside of the leg here. So possibilities here, but support yourself so you're not hurting the back. Okay, okay. Um, I'm just going to do a side stretch, but I think it's a bit hard. Um, okay, if you can, we're going to come into a side bend here. If you need to bend, you, if it's not comfortable, you might need to bend this leg. You can take this knee down. So you're kind of like this, I don't know if you can see, and then you're stretching. That probably makes it easier. Is that better? Yes. Okay, good. So you can keep it straight, obviously, if that's all right. Sorry, I, just, I, I, I can see everybody, <laughs> which is me like talking randomly, but it's, just no, it's no fun if you're stuck in a pose, it doesn't sort of feel nice. Um, and then coming back uh, to centre, and we'll move over to the other side. So remember you can, so Skandastanus is side lunge. If you bend that leg, it should feel a bit better. Or just do whatever you need to do, and we're going to come into a side bend from here. It's funny, isn't it? It's like some, it's, it's the knees, isn't it? You think it's like, We'll come into a side or a side kind of reach, really. It's quite, it's quite a deep squat, isn't it, through the knee? So I think that's where it can be a little bit problematic. We'll just take one breath here, and then we're going to come back to centre. Okay, right, I know, I know that's a bit awkward, that one. So we're going to come into, so the same pose we looked at on Wednesday. Uh, my favourite. <laughs> and then, and then, so this is, uh, what did I say, reclining, uh, reclining pose of Lord Vishnu. <laughs> so it's actually easier to say the Sanskrit uh, and then Tassana. Um, again, it's, it's one of those poses that probably should be really simple, but I, I, I do find it challenging. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't want to waffle on about my hips again, which is sorry, I was waffling on on Wednesday about why I can't do it properly. But um, what, let's do it together and see how you feel. So you're coming to lay on your side, Anantasana. Um, in theory, you're laying all the way down. <laughs> see, okay, so in this position, uh, so you're not rolling forwards and you're not rolling back, you're trying to kind of bounce on the side. Uh, if Ladies, so I'm, I'm quite, I have to say it really, just in case you're feeling it as well. If you're quite pear-shaped, uh, I think I actually bruised myself on Wednesday. It's quite awkward because you, you don't feel stable You because your hips are obviously wider, the widest point. So I always feel like I want to do this or I want to do this. 
it's very unstable, but uh, men probably don't have that problem. Or if you're slim hipped, you might not have this problem at all. Um, okay, but if it really hurts, you either double the mat or you put a blanket under the hip area or the cheat is to take a slight bend. A slight bend makes even a big difference uh, through the low leg. Okay, that being said, our first kind of experiment within the pose is to take the hand along the leg. Okay, so if, if your feet, it might feel, I don't know what it feels like for other people, you might feel like, oh, I can't feel anything, or you might feel wobbly and that you're trying to stabilise yourself. So that is the kind of feeling. So you're using a little bit of core strength to keep. Um, but again, I just feel the wobble because my hip bone, or I don't know if it's hip bone or something. Um, okay, you all look pretty good. So probably it's just me. <laughs> We're going to bend this knee up. So you're going to try to keep the knee pointing up um, as much as possible. So in theory, your hand comes here. If you feel excessively wobbly, again, a little bend in that low leg makes it all good. <laughs> or you can keep the hand here. Okay, you just kind of play with it and roll it. Okay. You're all looking like it's really easy, so it literally is me. The possibility to lay it on is to take the toe and to extend. Okay, I am cheating, I'm going to straighten my leg. Okay. Okay, okay. I see, I'm working really hard. Is it just me? Does anyone else look, look like they're working, <laughs> trying to stabilize? It's just, yeah, a little, little, little teeny wobbles, but not much. Okay. We all have our kind of you know, nemesis, <laughs> but it's a good one to practice because you, you are using obviously strength to say in this position and in this particular pose flexibility. You don't have to hold the toes, obviously, you can hold the leg or you can even. Well, I wouldn't bring a strap into it, it was a bit too complicated. Okay, good, really good. <laughs> That's really, really well done. Okay, and then we're going to um, release the toe, bring that leg back down, and then uh, we'll come up and over to the other side. So we'll, you could in theory roll over, but then you'll be facing away. So I'm gonna come move over. Okay. And that was quite, did you find that quite easy? Is that quite easy? Yeah, okay, it just must be just my hips. <laughs> no, not just my, oh good, thank you, Tesha. <laughs> it just feels like it gets bruised. Okay. I used to have that, I used to do ballet when I was little. I used to bruise my hip bones in certain sort of poses because we didn't used to use mats, we used to just go on the floor. It was just really painful. Um, no one else had hips in my ballet class, it's just me. <laughs> so you're either um, hands here, and then when you're ready, you're bringing your hand onto the side, just as your first kind of point. Again, you're just finding that balance. Um, okay. Okay, and then you're going to move it into tree, well, tree pose with the legs. So you find that balance, first of all, and then I'm rolling my hand onto the knee. But you can keep it here, though, that's fine. Okay, I'm going backwards and forwards. Okay, good. Yeah, as I bend my leg a little, I can't do it. Uh, and then the possibility to extend, so finding, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry, so I'm doing my own thing here, just reaching the toes possibly or holding the leg and then reaching up. You see how I didn't like doing this when I went to class, <laughs> I was giggling away to myself, but everyone else is being serious. Okay. Oh no, I have to, I have to do that. Okay. But it's a lovely stretch. It's like, um, Uchita has to pan gestasana, so extended hand to foot pose, isn't it? But well, obviously we're laying down. And it is a kind of balance, even though you're all doing it with total ease. It is a balance. So we're just bouncing on the side body. Okay, and then releasing the leg down. Okay, good. We're going to come onto our belly. So just take a moment, just to cut, it brings everything back to neutral. The macras and our crocodile pose we're doing. Okay. Um, and just uh, head can be to the forehead to the hand or head to one side. Just let the sort of feet flop open and just feel everything come back to neutral, nice and grounded as well. So lovely laying on your front. Okay, we're going to have 
to me. <laughs> Which is something is so comfy, Lane. Like, the front. Oh, the, just oh, yeah, you have to come up. So hands to the under the shoulders. Um, have we got time? Oh yes. No. What we'll do is we're gonna come. If you want to come to child's pose, you can. But we will move around onto our um onto our backs. Um, it's just if you need to come back to child's pose, come back for a couple of breaths while we're sort of setting ourselves up. Uh, this just depends on the back feels really, but we'll come on to our backs. Um, we're going to do, so Bananasana, like we did, uh, actually we could do it a little bit different. I think I'm on the pose, oh no, okay. We're going to have the legs outstretched, but you're going to shift your hip to the left side of the mat. So banana pose, it's actually yin yoga pose. It's just um, stretching the whole of the side of the body. So your hips are to the left of the mat, the feet or the heels are to the right corner, uh, possibly arms overhead, possibly if the shoulders are okay. The right hand would hold the left wrist and then you're open. So like imagine you're sort of looking at yourself from above and you're creating a banana shape in your body, okay? Good. So you, can, you shift the hips as far as you need to to feel the stretch, just in case you're not feeling it. Uh, if you, I don't think it, I'm not sure it makes that much difference actually with the legs stretched. If you find it makes a difference, you can take the left or cross at the ankle. So the le uh, right, sorry, the right foot comes over to cross at the ankles. I'm not sure if it makes that much difference with the legs extended. Sometimes we do it with the legs bent, and then that we can really feel that. But if it helps, or, or you feel the stretch deeper, then you can cross at the ankles. So we'll just take a couple of breaths here. You can feel that real stretch all the way up uh, left side or one side, depending where you're going. You can pull that wrist a little more to stretch a little more if you need to. Okay, and then we'll just bring uh, or release the hands release the arms, hands first of all, uncross the ankles, shift the bottom back to the centre for a moment, um, and just bring the knees in, you either circle the knees or just rock gently side to side. And then we do um, exactly the same to the other side, so you're going to bring your hips or your bottom to the right side of the mat, your feet to the uh, left corner, arms overhead, but just kind of see how the shoulders feel. Obviously, don't stretch too deep if it doesn't feel good. Um, left hand, right wrist, and just encouraging that a little bit, uh, sort of lengthening. You can cross the left leg over again, just if that helps. If it stretches, it might not be much. But... And then just softening into it. Breathing into the whole of the side body. So a lot of poses today opening into the side, side waist, side ribs, or across the hips, inside the arms. And one more breath here. And then coming back to centre. So release the arms, bring the uh, hips into the centre. If we bring the knees uh, Knees to the chest. If you want to circle, uh, you can obviously. It just depends if you need to release the back. And then we'll just take a few breaths or a couple of breaths to each side into a, a twist. So arms to shoulder height. We'll just take the knees to the left side. So you can cross the right leg over if you wish. Uh, and then just keep both shoulders rounded. Okay. And then you just feel that open or a twist. And then obviously through one side of the body. Breathing a little slower, a little more deeply, letting it, the body relax and just let your whole body relax. And then bringing the knees back to the centre, over to the other side. So change the cross of the legs if you did cross the legs. You don't have to, it does make it quite strong actually. So if it doesn't feel good, don't cross them. And then keep that uh, left back of the shoulder upper back grounded otherwise you're just rolling and don't feel the twist so much so feel that stretch across the, the side of the body releasing the spine let the head relax
Breathing just as deeply as you can. So nice full breaths. And then coming back to center. And then just finding a comfortable position for Shavasana. So legs outstretched or keeping the bend through the knees, whichever is more comfortable. Adjusting your position. So if your back, sometimes your back can feel a bit arched. So if it does, you just kind of tuck the pelvis under a little and that kind of flattens the low back in can feel more comfortable. The same with the head. If you feel too open across the neck, you just bring the chin in slightly. Just the position that enables you to just fully uh, allow yourself to relax. I'm going to sit up before I fall asleep. <laughs> And just first of all, be aware of your body and letting everything go. We might naturally just, you know, after a full practice, just kind of fall into this uh, deep feeling of relaxation, or you might find it um, a bit more challenging. But just let your body, if you let your body be heavy first, let the, you feel the weight of the back of the body pressing into the mat, so really purposely being heavy. So letting the back of the head feel heavy. Softening, releasing around the jaw, the cheeks. Releasing even across the scalp, so feeling like the top of the head is just relaxed. And then you're letting this feeling flow down, so a softness, a release uh, across the throat and the neck. Letting that move into the shoulders, so allow the shoulders to relax. Moving into the arms, so a feeling of release across the upper arms, the elbows, the forearms, wrists, hands. So allowing them to be heavy by the sides or on your belly, wherever they're resting. Bring your awareness to the, to the belly, to the chest. So feel the breath. Be aware of where the breath is moving in the body. So maybe expanding into the belly, maybe expanding into the chest. Taking a deep breath in, feeling that movement. And then with the exhalation, just allowing yourself to sink a little deeper. So soften the belly, soften the ribs, soften up the chest, feel the connection with the spine and the mat. And then the awareness moving down to the lower half of the body, the hips, the pelvis, the bottom, heavy pressing into the mat. Moving down through the legs, softening the thighs, softening the knees, the lower legs, shins, calves, ankles, heels heavy, toes relaxed. The whole body grounded. The whole body relaxed. And then from this, this place of stillness, this place of rest, just starting to be aware of your breath. So breathing in and out through the nose. Just a natural breath first of all, and then starting to, to kind of deepen. Long inhalation, extending the exhalation. Again, breathing a, a deep, full breath in. And then exhaling and releasing. And then moving from an awareness of the breath back to the body. So making a small movement. So however you feel and to move. Maybe fingers, maybe toes. Good 
And then just kind of layering on, so you could just go into the wrists or the ankles. You might take a full body stretch, or you might feel the, to bring the knees to the chest. So however feels good, but just kind of wake yourselves up a little. You can release the spine a little if that feels good. And just slowly uh, coming back or coming up to a seated position. So no rush, just come onto your side first and take a moment. And then we're just slowly coming back to, uh, to a comfortable seat. <laughs> okay, we're back. <laughs> Are we just we're gonna um, close with our three arms. So I was just waiting for the heads to pop up. Um, so you have your hands to comfortable position, wherever you prefer, really. Uh, and taking a deep breath in first of all, breathing in. Exhaling, then taking a, a deep breath in again. Oh. And again, deep breath in. Oh. And last time, deep breath in. Thank you. So it won't be loud today, was it? Um, we'll just take the hands together, bring the thumbs to the brow center, open mind, and then back down to the heart center, open heart. So thank you very much for joining me this morning. Namaste. Okay. Thank you very much. And then, uh, maybe I should maybe I should stop. Should I stop the recording? <laughs> Otherwise, all the races will be popping up. <laughs> I'll stop the recording. Uh,